So Horizon decided to set Dr. Persinger's theories and his machine the ultimate test. To give a religious experience to one of the world's most strident atheists, Professor Richard Dawkins. It worries me about religion that it teaches people to be satisfied with not understanding than the rather silly mysteries that have been erected. In Professor Dawkins' opinion, the struggle of atheism against religion is nothing less than the battle of truth against ignorance. What in time... But wait a minute, well, I must interrupt you. I'm, yeah. uh, it is, what I'm, exactly what I'm saying is, is impoverished. It's petty. It, it doesn't live up to the... Will Dr. Persinger succeed where the Pope, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Dalai Lama have failed? If I were turned into a devout religious believer, my wife has threatened to leave me. I've always been curious to know what it would be like to have a mystical experience. I'm looking forward to the attempt this afternoon. Dr. Persinger planned to apply a range of different magnetic fields across Richard Dawkins' brain. I've so far experienced nothing unusual at all. The fields must be adjusted because Dr. Persinger's work suggests that different shapes of field and whether they're applied over the left or right temporal lobe can make a difference to whether the subject experiences God or not. Feeling slightly dizzy. Initially, Dr. Persinger applied a field to the right hand side of Richard Dawkins' head. Quite strange. Then, to increase the chances of feeling a sensed presence, Dr. Persinger started to apply the magnetic field to both sides of the head. in my breathing, I don't know what that is. My left leg is sort of moving. Right leg is twitching. So after 40 minutes, had Richard Dawkins been brought closer to God? Unfortunately, I didn't get the sensation of a presence. It pretty much felt as though I was in total darkness um, with a helmet on my head and um, uh, pleasantly relaxed um, and occasionally feeling the sensations which I described as they occurred into the microphone. Um, but I would be hard put to it to swear that those were not things that could happen to me any time on a dark night. I'm very disappointed. It would have been deeply interesting to me to have experienced something of what religious people do experience in the way of a mystical experience, a communion with the universe. I would have liked to have experienced that. But Dr. Persinger believes that there was a particular reason why the experiment failed for Richard Dawkins. We developed a questionnaire a few years ago called temporal lobe sensitivity and what we found is a continuum of sensitivities from people who are not temporal lobe sensitive to those who are very sensitive and the extreme end being the temporal lobe epileptic. In the case of Dr. Dawkins, his temporal lobe sensitivity is much, much lower than most people we run, than the average person, much, much lower. It may not be open to everybody in the same degree to have particular kinds of religious experience. There is a very interesting dispute at the moment about whether one can have a talent for religion and whether that is something like a musical talent, which some people have and other people don't have. 
Despite the setback with Professor Dawkins, Dr. Persinger's research on over a thousand human guinea pigs has gone further than any other to establish a clear link between spiritual or religious experience and the temporal lobes of the human brain. It has put his research at the very cutting edge of neurotheology.